folding snacks. Y'all give it up for T.C. Carson. <laughs> Got a microphone. We're going to bounce a little back and forth and let y'all, you know, ask some questions. We're going to talk a little bit first. Um, if you don't mind, I, I mean, listen, I love Star Wars. Awesome. God of War fan. Awesome. Right? But I'm a music guy first. Can we talk a little bit about music? What's, what's, so, first of all, phenomenal voice. Oh, Love thank you, music. brother. You're welcome. Um, for people who maybe aren't familiar with that side of, of what you do, can we just talk a little about music and how important that is to you? Sure. Uh, I started out in this business as a vocalist. I've been singing since fifth grade. That's the first time I got on stage. and. Um, Music is the thing that I think I was really put here to do. All, everything else kind of falls in line with that direction for me. So the acting, the dancing, all of that to me is part of the music. It came, it started from that. Yeah. What is it? Is there something specific about music? Are you drawn to a, I mean, a lot of jazz stuff, obviously, but is there something that you're drawn to specifically? Well, music is a vibration. People don't understand it. Music, um, it is a vibrational thing that happens to your body. And when you are in high vibration, music can put you in high vibration. And when you're in high vibration, then you can you feel better and you um, function better in the world. Right now, music is very low vibrational, and which is why we kind of get stuck when we get stuck. So I understand, as a musician, I understand my part of the reason I am a musician is to take people and bring, raise their vibration. So hopefully, the music that I do helps to raise people's vibration and gives them, it makes them happy. I love that. I love that. Is there a, when you get ready to go do a particular voice or show or game or whatever it is, is there something that you listen to to get you in that place before you, before you say, go into, a, go into the vocal booth? No, not really. Not the movie. No. Just, it's a different place for you. Yeah, it's a they, different place. They yeah. two different places. All right, so let's talk about the difference between that. Where does that 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 space for when you get ready to go in and, and put your vocals down somewhere, right? You're not doing something physical on stage. How is that different for you as a as a person, as a, as an artist, than than it is for music? In my music, I have control over what it is. So when I'm singing, nobody is really telling me how to do this or where to go or what notes to hit. It's totally on me. But when you are doing voiceover work and you're doing acting work, there's always somebody else that is controlling how you say it or how you do it or how they want you to say it. Do it. So it, it's about control for me. Yeah. And you prefer that control for yourself? Absolutely. Right? Having, that, having that as your own Absolutely. thing? Absolutely. Who wouldn't? Of course. <laughs> of course. Um, so listen, Mace new fans in the building? Yeah. Couple of y'all? Couple of y'all? All right. Who's got a Star Wars based question? Y'all scared. Y'all scared. I know you do. I don't know why you act like you don't. I know you do. I don't know why you act like you don't. My man said, huh? <laughs> I know you do. I know you do. No pressure, man. Eli. Mr. Carson, when doing, when doing Mace Windu, how much inspiration did you take from Samuel L. Jackson's portrayal and makes it like, like, must be like percentage? Or how, how did you mix it? So in the beginning, um, it was definitely more of a Sam Jackson sound. They wanted more of that energy. But then when um, Fioni got the series, he wanted to kind of morph him into something that was more comfortable for me. So something that was still familiar, but it was a, it was a different mix. And I think we, we came on something that floats between the two. I agree. Was that, um, was it, what was the process like in making that transition to finding that voice in between for you? Just trying different things and seeing what landed. And and when it stuck, it stuck. Yeah. You just knew. Yeah. You just knew. All right, listen. I know some people out here living single bank. Okay. Okay. 
Listen, I heard them already. That's Kyle Bart. <laughs> I see y'all out here. All right, so I know we got some living single bitch questions out here. If you want to ask a living single, I'm like, you got some. Maybe you got, come on. No, I'm not doing pressure. You don't have to. But, but I know y'all have questions. See, there it is. See, there it is. I don't have a question. I just want to thank you for the betrayal of Kyle Barker. Like, all you guys, y'all are like legendary. And even to this day, I still get a meaning out of that show. Like I just told you, me and my daughter watch, me and my kids watch. We're walking around the house quoting y'all like the show just came out five minutes ago. I was just looking at the episode where you um, was the choir director and you killed the song. Like just you and Max together, you know, Max, if you was a man. You know, just like those little barbs you guys had, legendary, and I, I appreciate that. It makes me smile in a dark place. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. That's awesome. On set, how much of what y'all did on set was you just being able to play with what, you know, obviously you get a script, but but how much of it is something where you kind of get to just do what it is you want to do and it and it lands and keep it? It just depends. It just depends. Like, um, the gig is can you make the words live? You know, so it's kind of not about you, it's about what you're hired to do. And I got blessed to have a character that I really connected with that I could actually push to different places and allow and push them to push him to different places. So, you know, it was a really um, kind of a synergy, uh, synergy that happened with the show and the people that I was working with, we were all, we're all still really good friends. We love each other, we talk on the phone. Uh, so the, the, the camaraderie you felt, the friendship you felt, it was real, it was real. That's so when you get that opportunity, you can play off each other because it is more natural. Absolutely. You have that that kind of bond. it's a safe space. How long how long did it take to build that bond? Was it instant for you guys on set or did it like it was pretty much after the first couple of rehearsals. And then you just you, yeah. you had it. All right. Did y'all fight? Like cause I, well, I'm brothers, gonna tell you something. I really thought you always fight with your brothers and sisters. Yeah, nah, oh, well, I, I thought you really it hated don't mean them. nothing. Like I thought you hated <laughs> Matt. Like you did that. Like I was like but I had somebody say to me the other day, they like, he actually made me like Max. Like, I hated Max at front, and then he made me like Max. And I don't know how he did that. And I was like, because he good at what he do. Right. Sam, we got a question back here. So it was not really based on, like, the answer you just gave, but, like, uh, what challenges did you find in building the character out for Kyle, for him to like evolve into like a person that a lot of people could like, like not just like a, a niche group because he was um, real interesting. Is that, if that makes sense? So like, how did you go about building that character and also not fall into being typecast to enter such a big role? Um, that's a good question. So Kyle, uh, I learned real early on that he was important to our community, who he was. And so it, I had to step out of me and understand what that was for my community and so what that represented. And so I kept pushing that representation to the people that were writing, to the people that were um, putting up uh, costumes together to the stories that were being told. I kept my intention there and eventually everybody's intention became together about what that what he was. Um, it wasn't something that I beat them over the head with. It was just something that I decided to be. Did, did, does it surprise you now that there are so many young people that connect with that show? Absolutely, I never thought it would be what it is for culture. I never I never thought it was, I just knew it was important for my community, but I never thought it would be what it is. Yeah, at, at the time, I can see being in it at the time and not knowing but having the feeling. Mm -hmm. But then to see it, like she was saying, like my own daughter got on like this friend's kick for a moment. 
and I was like, nah, you, you don't gotta, say that word. You gotta, I know. I'm like, that's why I was like, nah, you gotta watch the real one. You gotta watch the original, the original. And now she's like, oh my god, this is so good. And like, you know, she's 14. It just, do you have? How often does that happen to you that you have people that are kind of like, yeah, I watch with my kids, but my kids love you, love the character. How important somebody like Max is to a young lady, how important somebody like Kyle is to a young man who just doesn't still get to see it now. Oh, well, you know, you think about back then, and it was really new news to see two dark skinned people together. Yeah. You never saw a dark skinned couple. You always one had to be light, one had to be dark, and they both had to be light. So that in itself was a a, a groundbreaking thing that they did. And also the infusion of all the African things and the black designers and um, we just really tried to make sure that we represented who we were in a positive way. It was a natural um, progression to me. We had Cosby show, and then we had um, a different world and now we had the people graduating from a different world and working in their business and doing what they do so it was a natural progression that we as an audience got to see us yeah we got to see us in a way that we hadn't been seeing us that certainly was a was a thing for me watching you know growing up and and seeing it because again you didn't get to know you see it was something that wasn't regularly portrayed and so, again, like they said, thank you for doing that. I'm so glad that you were a part of it. I'm glad that it's, it's something that is continuing to exist now and is, is hitting with people. What does, what does the availability of something like living single now, that streaming services that are in place, and so for so long, you couldn't find it? Did you notice like a pop or a resurgence when that, when that streaming started to hit? <laughs> Yeah, my bank account did. <laughs> it was good. I'm just glad that it still resonates with people, really. Yeah. You know, I didn't watch the show. I didn't really watch it. I watched it maybe a few times in the beginning just to be clear about who he was, but I, just, I didn't watch the show until after I got off the show. Really? Yeah. Um, what, what was it about? Why, why not? It just wasn't... I didn't want to comment, I didn't want to comment on my acting. I just wanted to be him. And I thought if I started watching it, then I would be critiquing him, doing things. And I didn't want to do that. Gotcha. Did, did, are you like that with other work that you do? Do you yeah. not watch it as you're doing it? Nah. Do you ever go back and watch it? Sometimes. Sometimes. What does sometimes. that mean? What is sometimes? Is that... Uh, if I catch it, you know, on something, I made it, like, every you know, once in a while, I'll catch Living Single on and I'll watch it. And I'll go, ah, oh, that's funny. Uh, but I don't really seek out my performances because I always hate them. I always find things that I don't like in them, so, you know. Because you're your biggest critic? Because you're your biggest critic? Absolutely. Are you, are you like that with your music? Absolutely. So you don't listen to your own music? I do, just to make sure I get it right. How do you know when it's right? I mean, it's a feeling, right? I'm just saying. Like, how do you know when it's right? If you listen to it to make sure it's right. Um, if I did what I intended to do. Okay. If I did what I intended to do, then that's it's right. If it's a if, if it's a thing that you're doing and you know you want to evoke invoke a certain thing in people. When you hear it, you're like, that's it. Yeah. That's the, that's the thing. Uh -huh. All right. I, I mean, I think that. All right. So, I want to talk a little bit about God of War. Okay. Yeah, they, they got excited. I want to talk about OG God of War. How did, how did you voice in Kratos originally come about? Uh, just audition for it. And that was it. Was yeah. It, was it like multiple or just one, one and done? I think it was two. Two. Yeah. How did you find the right voice for Kratos? Kratos is my alter ego at the time because I was going through a whole bunch of shit. Okay. <laughs> That's fair. I was able to go into the booth and scream and holler and 
release all of that pent up frustration and anger that I had with the business and with people and I could walk out and it's my therapy session. So he's just angry. <laughs> He's just yeah. angry. I mean, did they give you like they? T I'm sure they told you something about what the story was going to be like. Oh yeah. Did you identify with the character other than just also being angry at the time? Was it just? Was it just? He's angry. I'm angry at work. Well, angry because things had been taken from him. Yeah. And he felt they were taken unjustly, yeah. and so I was feeling like that. Okay. So I was able to use all of that. We, Wait a minute, I see all y'all got got these pictures and shit. I don't want to see no AI with my uh, <laughs> my voice and face on it. Alright? They promised. Alright. They promised. They not shit. They won't they won't do it. They won't do it at all. Uh, you know. Cause I just saw Oprah and Gail with some city girl looking things. I what the hell? Y'all seen it too. I know y'all seen it too. Is that is that is that evolution of technology? Is it is it is it scary for you? I think it's very scary for creators. I think um, when people can take your likeness and do whatever the, they want to do with it and not be responsible, not pay for it, not be responsible for the content they put it on, they can just do whatever they want to do with it. That's not right. It's dangerous. It's not right, man. And, and again, how do we how do we figure out what's real and what's not anymore? Right? Yeah. Because now the fakes look just as, as real as real shit. One hundred percent. You can't tell. So and you can't you can't depend on regulators. Yeah. To regulate it because they're making money. Yeah. It's all about money. It's all about putting out people's jobs so they can make more money and spend less. So understand that when y'all on this TikTok and all this shit, they're getting your images, they're getting your voices, they're getting your face, they're getting your likenesses. And when you look at Zoom's license agreement now, there is a clause on it that tells you that they get to use your images however they want to. You just click when you are radio on your Zoom, they can pull those pictures, pull your voice, and use it however they want to. So when you sign these license agreements for these different things, read that shit. 100%? Read it. 100%. We got a question back here, sir. Right here, right here, right here. Thor has a question, sir. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You want mine for a second? Hey, can you hear me? Uh, yep. So you did an amazing job with the first three God of Wars. Why didn't they continue with you for the new versions? You know, that's a real good ass question. That is a great. I asked that same damn question. I wasn't going to ask it, but I knew it was coming. You know, I couldn't get an answer. But what I realized um, it was so video game work. A lot of it has moved into motion capture. And Kratos is a big guy. I'm not a big guy. I don't move like a big guy. And they had to hire two people to do the video game when I was doing the voice. And me for the voice, and then somebody else for the motion capture. Well, Chris is a big guy. Got a deep voice. We cut out somebody. Two for one. I mean, I get the business wise. I get the business of it, you know. It is what it is. I had a good run. I'm still number one. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. The OG. I'm gonna tell you secretly, like I was playing God of War, and I was like, Kratos sent black. <laughs> and I was looking. I was like, it ain't. I know that's ash on him, but I don't know. He would have used lotion. Like I don't. Like I don't know. And I felt like you know I identified. I wasn't angry though. I wasn't angry at the time. Like, you know, like, I identify. We got another question back here. Which God Award did you think that you connected with most in, you know, the trilogy in the first year? I think it was an evolution. I think, you know, as I got more into 
who he was, I kind of grew into the stories. And so I think it was an evolution. I liked all of it, but it was an evolution for me. Is there a, do you, how different is doing voiceover video games from doing voiceover for animation or something else? Uh, video games usually is a lot more um, efforts, like grunts and groans and yeah. slashing and uh, screaming and all of that stuff. Uh, but animation stuff, unless you're doing anime anime, uh, the animation stuff I've done is not a whole lot. Of Some, but not a lot. Is there is there something in animation or video games that you haven't done you'd like to do? Yeah, I haven't played like an evil want to take over the world. Yeah, I want to do that. <laughs> take you, over the you, world kind you, of character. You yeah. think you'd be a great Lex Luthor? Is that, that's what I'm hearing. <laughs> can we start a petition? Why not? Can we Can we do it? Because I'm here for that. I'm here for it. We got a question right here, sir. Hey, what's up? Hey, man. Going back to the living single just for a second, my man touched on it for a little while, but um, not saying any names of the show, but there was a very similar show that came out uh, after living single. And I was just wondering what the, the mood of the cast was around that time the show came out. Uh, you talking about that show that's not with them? Yeah, that show. <laughs> I like to know how how people felt about that at the living single, like the living single cast, you know. Well, again, you know, both shows were um, owned by Warner Brothers, and all of the networks have a history of taking the black shows and using them to garner their um, constituencies, and then once they get the numbers, they let the black shows go. So it was not anything that was out of the ordinary to see the show being rebooted and them getting the money, them getting every, all the things that we could get. Um, that's what it was, this is Hollywood. You know, uh, didn't stop us from doing what we were doing, but we did see it and we were like, wow, that's what we doing, nah, okay. All right, what you gonna do? I mean, again, Warner Brothers owns both shows, so they get to do what they want to do with their property. Yeah, we got a question behind you. Uh, Jesus! Hey, how you doing, man? <laughs> hey, uh, one kind to another, important question. Uh, <laughs> do you anticipate throwing hands, breaking throwing hands with anyone in my pantheon? Oh, man. Oh, man. Huh. <laughs> I need an answer. I can help you get your hey, hey, hey. <laughs> One God to another. Oh! Took the mic back real quick. Hold on a second. Don't press you. Um, oh, I think Hercules. Oh. I, I, I think I think Hercules and Kratos would be a nice a nice battle. You know, I don't think Herc would win. I think Kratos has the anger proportion. So anger trumps strength sometimes. So yeah. I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that. We got yeah. one more question. <laughs> Hello. Hey. So, if you could go back in time, would you continue voicing Kratos, or would you just leave it as it is? I, I would continue as long as they would continue to pay me. Oh, they would. They would. <laughs> okay, but then yeah. <laughs> that was the right answer. That was the right answer. A hundred percent. All right. So listen, we getting ready to wrap this up. I can take one more question. But now you got a question? You ain't have a question when I started. All right. You, you, you know what? Hey, don't, don't come all the way up here. Come on, you talk. I think I got one in the back, too. You got one back? All right, get the one in the back. Get the one in the back. Does he? You know. He's going to raise his hand. Yeah. No, you, we still coming back to you, though. Yeah, we'll get up here. Okay, I'll make it quick. <laughs> Greatest has used a lot of cool weapons in this world. If you could have one of them, what would it be? Ooh, the blades. Hell yeah. The blades, all day. The blades all day. All day. I love it. Also the right answer. Also the right answer. Okay. H got a comment. Then we get out of here. While he's making his way up here, y'all all know that TC is upstairs and y'all can go and meet and greet 
all the grass and so forth. Did y'all know that? You didn't know that. Y'all gotta make y'all gotta make y'all way up there. We'll make sure y'all get up there. Hey, G. this is actually more common. It's one of those movies that a lot of people don't watch, but if anybody ever gets around to it, U571, the World War II oh, movie. Ah. Because it, it kept clicking and then it finally clicked it down. I remember you was in that. Thank you. That oh, was thank you, That's Wait a fun movie to do. One of my favorites. Straight up one of my favorites. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, we're getting ready to wrap this up. CC's got to go back upstairs. But again, you all can go and see him at his table upstairs down the hallway. Please do. The corner. Please do. Come check TC out. Greatly appreciate it. Y'all give it up for TC Carson. Can we, can we take a big group picture? Y'all know how to stand and get together? Y'all know how to like... Alright, so listen. On three, y'all gonna say Stellar Con, but act like you made it. One, two, three, Stellar Con! One more. One more time. One, two, three, Stellar Con! I love it. Good job, y'all. Thank you so much. What it do, snackers and snackers? Did you like what you just saw? Would you like to help us grow? Here's what you can do. Shoot over to patreon.com forward slash loading snacks. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe on your favorite platform of choice. Appreciate you.